Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to everyone. On behalf of Printis, I would like to welcome everyone joining us today for our third session on Printis uh, Young Professional uh, Series, which is the Early Career Academics Online Seminar and Training Series 2022, or the short form is East 2022. So, for this third session, uh, the title that we'll be sharing, uh, the topic that we'll be sharing is Climbing the Academic Ladder, Tips and Strategies for Early Career Academics. Okay, as usual, we have our distinguished speaker, which is Prof. Uh, IRTS Dr. Muhammad Rizal Arshad from uh, USM. Uh, so he'll be sharing his wisdom, his experience, in, especially on the topic of how we can progress and how we can climb the academic ladder. Uh, just a reminder that this is just one of the, the topics that we'll be discussing or that we'll be sharing uh, from, the, from the whole series, which I'm going to share. Uh, so we have other topics uh, starting in February and it will end in August. So now we're in March, uh, sorry, we're in April, and then we will have uh, four, four other topics that we'll be sharing. Okay, but especially for today, we'll be discussing on the topic of climbing the academic ladder, tips and strategies for early career academics. All right, so uh, without uh, further delay, I'll, I'll hand the session to Prof. Rizal. Prof. Rizal, you want to try to share your slides? Okay. Okay, let me just uh, put my Oh, slide. sorry. I think I need to give you permission. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh, okay, okay. You have to. All right. Now uh, I've given you the permission, bro. Okay. Yeah, can you uh, can you see my slides? Yeah? Yes, bro. Your voice is perfect. Your slide is appearing. So, okay. Yeah, okay. it's great. Okay. Uh, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Very good morning to everyone. Firstly, I would like to thank uh, Associate Professor Dr. Rashidan for uh, uh, the kind uh, uh, introduction uh, to the series. So my name is uh, Dr. Rizal. I'm from uh, ESM. I think we have met uh, before in the last uh, two sessions uh, of the talk. Uh, so today I'll be talking about uh, climbing the academic ladder, tips and strategies for early uh, career academics. So uh, I think in terms of uh, in terms uh, of uh, a career uh, is uh, or vocation or job, etc. Whatever you want to call it, uh, we, uh, it is quite natural for us to expect progression in our work because uh, if there's no possibility of progression that means uh, progressions in terms of uh, the kind of work we're doing in terms of our salary in terms of our the challenges that or the issue the things that we need to solve etc those are quite natural uh, expectation when we join any kind of uh, work or vocation as an income generation uh, revenue for to sustain our life, for example, right? So, and, and the same goes with uh, being an academic in an institution of higher learning. It is very, uh, it, it is acceptable, accepted that there must be a certain very uh, uh, a, a, a clear uh, career path uh, uh, where it is attainable, where it is uh, 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 challenging enough, attractive enough for us to go through. Uh, it, it shouldn't be too, 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 uh, too uh, high of uh, in terms of the bar that nobody can 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 get through the the path. I mean, to, nobody can get uh, promoted. Yeah, in, uh, put it in simple words because it's too difficult to get promote uh, uh, to get to be promoted in that uh, kind of uh, in certain environment. So, but as an academic, when we work in an in a university, uh, be it in a public university or pri uh, the, uh, the private uh, university or the public sectors, uh, edu higher education industry, 
uh, we still uh, uh, always look forward for uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, uh, in terms of progression in our career. So I've been in the university, uh, I think I've mentioned this a few times before, uh, since uh, March of 1999. So this would be my uh, 22nd, 23rd year of being uh, an academic in an institution of higher learning. I was, uh, I started in USM, uh, then I, I took a, sh a short uh, stint in Unimap for about 21 months and I'm back in USM. So, I think the nature of academic career advancement, I think uh, uh, it is highly prestigious. Uh, it's well respected uh, because normally when we increase, for example, we, you come in as a lecturer now, uh, nowadays in the public sector, you, uh, in the public universities, uh, when you come in with a PhD, uh, typically you're going to be given the senior lecturer position. Then you go for the associate professor uh, position and then you go for professorship. And then even in professorship, uh, for the government, uh, government sector, you have the uh, uh, VK7, VK6, VK5, C, B, A, etc. So, so as you progress higher and higher, it, it becomes more prestigious. It is, uh, and it, it, it also will become very challenging. And also, uh, uh, it becomes more selective in terms of who gets to. Uh, okay? But... Uh, uh, it is is it is the reality wherever you are, wherever we are uh, as long as we are attached to an institution of high learning and uh, we are an academics a faculty member a lecturer whatever you call it you want to call it an instructor uh, you need to uh, there are certain expectations that are being given to you in order you to progress in your career okay of course if you work in a public university in a Malaysian context. You got you would get this uh, annual uh, increment of depending on your scale, uh, maybe 200, 100 plus, 200 ringgit, 300 ringgit, 400 ringgit, standard annual increment. Uh, even if you if we stay at that uh, uh, position, like let's say a senior lecturer throughout your years serving in university, you still got going to get this increment. And probably if you you've done some uh, uh, something like uh, you you were. Uh, there were some issues in terms of disciplinary issues, and you were given uh, show cost letters, etc. Maybe that, that that kind of uh, annual promotion will be freeze, uh, will be frozen, for example, maybe for one or two years. But other than that, uh, typically one will get this standard uh, increment in terms of salary a year, uh, every year. Uh, okay, but of course, if you want to jump that and jump that process, you need to go for a jumping in terms of your position. This is where we call. This is the where we, we are. What we are talking about this morning. Uh, how do we climb the uh, career ladder in terms of an academic, as an academic in an institution of higher learning? So, uh, academic uh, uh, as an academic. Before this, there was like there is uh, to be honest about. There is no single model or single ideal model or pathway. Uh, depends on our capacity. Uh, some uh, each one of us are very unique. We are unique, uh, certainly. So we have different capabilities, different strengths and weaknesses. So there are there are people can survive well in the research path, uh, uh, career path. There are uh, uh, there are one who are serve well in terms of teaching path. There are people who can do well in the management path, the admin path, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that means depending on the model or the uh, pathway, we need to find the one that suits us, suits our uh, strength, uh, uh, capability, and capacity. So there are many. There are many. There's no one single way of getting promoted. As uh, you know, uh, that we need to take in order to climb and uh, uh, the the career ladder uh, to to get better position, as I say, better salary, etc. Et so a generic academic promotion process will look like this. This is a generic one. Huh? So you will see opens a promotional. Okay, some you will see now this in Malaysia. Some they are open 24 7, 365 days uh, throughout. There's no closing, it opens. Uh, so the philosophy is that once you qualify, they will call you for interview. Uh, they, they kind of, uh, they use some, I think UTM, correct me if I'm wrong, some they use, they use some flex system. It means uh, if you're qualified, you will be called for, uh, be, be called for interview, be informed that you are now being considered to be promoted, etc. 
um, probably be, be asked to submit more information. Some universities, they have this open and closed cycle. So when I was in Unimed, uh, we still have the open and close. It opens the call for promotion, you submit, then close. So then you, you have to wait in order to submit uh, for the next round. You know, the, if you miss the, 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 the window of submission, you have to wait, okay? But it depends, depends where we are. Uh, so you have to know your university system, how they do the promotion exercise, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the interested academics will uh, probably uh, will see endorsement from the deans. Uh, some universities do not need the permission of the dean. They can submit straight away. Some university I know of, they need to get the permission. The dean needs to endorse this application. So depending where you are, you have to, but generally that is uh, the interested academic uh, needs to uh, prepare and submit the application. And then there will be a committee that will assess the applications and then the, probably after that, for, uh, for some university, for associate professor, they call for interview, some they don't call for interview. There are, uh, uh, for professor, probably they will call you for interview. In most cases, they will call you for interview and then the result will be announced. And some, what's the time spent for all this process? Uh, and there are many variations from this uh, generic uh, uh, process. There are variations, and some are more detailed on this part, some are more light on this part, etc. But at the, at the end of the day, you still would like to promote people based uh, spe uh, specifically for those who have performed and meet the criteria for promotion. And normally, it is very bad, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's not good for a university. Uh, to not provide the career path because this will be will demotivate immediately the staff from uh, doing anything productive because what's the point of uh, what's the point of uh, being a productive person academics if there's no chance of uh, a progressing uh, progression uh, advancement in your career sometimes uh, and, and people get motivated by different reasons some based because of the salary some because of the title, some because of uh, so many so many other reasons. But then there must be the uh, there must be a clear path and possibility of getting uh, advancement or progression along the path. Okay, and to be to be honest about it, uh, to be practical about it, now these people are also talking about the other way around. I mean, getting demoted, demoted or uh, getting stripped of the promotion, getting rather than progressing up, uh, progressing. Now, one may, may, may at one point in time, if they do not perform well, probably they will be stripped of the, they get demoted, et cetera. So this is uh, some, some uh, possible scenario that may come into, into operations, uh, especially when there's so many academics around and when, when we uh, universities are now facing a lot of uh, uh, constraint in terms of uh, the budgeting or the finance, okay? So, uh, and then for academic promotion, motivation, strategy framework, uh, there, are, uh, there, are, there are three questions that uh, uh, normally come, in, come into play. Uh, why do academics want promotion? Uh, why, do, why do I, why do you want, uh, want, want, uh, want to be promoted? Why, why promotion is important to you? Uh, so this one is very, the answer may be quite unique to each one of us. Of course, there are the obvious one because of the salary, because of the, uh, as I say, the position, uh, the the stature of being uh, having a title, for example, maybe uh, having a title professor in in front of your name, it it, it, it basically help you hype you up and uh, give you this good feeling uh, to you, for example. So there are uh, different people will have different motivation. Uh, so so we need to answer the question: Why do we want promotion? in our career as an academic, as a faculty member in a university setting. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I know of some people who could they say because of the money, because they, they know that a professor in a university, in a public university, just to give the, to be, thing, to be clear about the example, let's say uh, now as a senior lecturer or associate professor, probably your take home salary maybe around, um, 10,000, maybe yeah, 10, 11,000, for example, after you work for, let's say, after you've been an associate professor, let's say for two, three years, probably you, you're get, going to get bring, take home will be around 10, 11. That's my rough estimate. Eh? Then probably you know of that if you, uh, if I if I get a professorship, I'll be 
taking around maybe uh, 17, uh, 18,000 at least uh, take home uh, salary. So there's a jump of about four, 5,000, for example. That really motivated you to get your go through the promotion path. But if money, if money is the object, if the money is the goals, probably you are looking at the wrong place. Probably you want to go to the industry, you want to do more uh, consultation work, etc. You don't want to do, uh, for example, commercialization uh, of your product or research product. So there are, depending on the motivation, there are many. Uh, they say there are many ways to skin a cat, right? It means there are many ways to achieve something. So, but of course, uh, it depends on uh, our 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 uh, uh, motive of wanting it. And then, what do academics need to do to be promoted? And this is important because if you do not know what's the requirement, it's nearly impossible to get promoted. You, you we do not get promoted by chance. Well, <laughs> to be. Yeah, some people do get promoted because they have this cable with this person. Well, once once upon a time before in Malaysia, when I was a uh, young lecturer just coming back, I had this story so where people can get become professor just because they are good to do with these this people, they are good with the deans, etc. But now this is it's no longer the game. Now this you need to prove your worth in order to get promoted. So what so as an academic, you really need to know. What are required? Uh, so this is good. and then the, the the final question: How do academics need to behave? Who are these to get promoted? Uh, so this is uh, uh, you need to know your motive, why you want, why you want the promotion. You need to know uh, what's needed to get promoted, and how do you behave in order to get? How do you operationalize the understanding in order to get promoted to be promoted? So. Simple, uh, what do academics need to do to succeed? What do you need to do to climb the academic ladder, uh, to, gain, uh, to climb the promotion, to be promoted? It's clear, right? So we, we thought there's only two stages. First is for you to, uh, for you to become promotable. <laughs> become promotable. Well, there, are, there are people, uh, surprisingly, that uh, do not uh, put the effort to become promotable. Uh, they, they say, you know, when I, I had... Uh, I had a very well some friends in uh, in one uni Indonesian university. He's, he was a professor back then, and uh, he related a story to me when he was younger. When he was younger, and he's a very excellent professor. So his philosophy is this, his philosophy is that uh, in order uh, if the university thinks that I'm good, they will give me a promotion. I do not want to apply. <laughs> so I do not want to apply that kind of. That kind of uh, princip uh, principle, uh, life principle, right? But I would advise you not to hold to that kind of principle. Right? If you're working in Malaysia in the university, in public university or private university, you need to apply. You need to apply, right? But in order to apply, one needs to know how, uh, how, to become, how to be someone who is promotable. You make it easier to the uh, evaluation committee to promote you, to agree with you, to pass you, to let you through because you are promotable. This person is promotable. <laughs> in, in my career, in my life as an academic, I've been in a number of evaluation sessions. I, I, we can immediately see this person, click at everybody that look at the file, that submission say, click at. No need to waste time to really spend a lot of time to. Uh, to consider this proposal because this is clearly, clearly a promotable academic. Okay, so stage one is to become becoming promotable, uh, so that you you make life easy for everyone because you have all the materials to get promoted. Okay? And stage two, getting promoted. Okay, because from stage one to stage two, they are they are the process that you need to go through. As I, the the example that I relate to you about my friend in Indonesia. Though he is very promotable, but since he did not apply, probably he will get promoted. Okay, but, but, but for, for, for his case, for my friend, he, he was promoted because this was, we are talking about 10, 20 years ago. This is an old story. Yeah? But that means now this, if you are very promotable academic, but you do not, you do not apply, really, I don't think you get promoted. Eh? Because you need to apply you need to uh, submit the request that you want to be promoted and then people will consider and fill all the forms so between stage one and stage two there are all the process that you need to uh, ensure that you go through in order to be promoted okay
Okay, so how to how to be promotable? How to be promotable? <laughs> to be so I so I see the young lecturer like a baby, ah. Huh? <laughs> oh, you're not baby. I'm pretty sure, but you, you may have your own babies, huh? <laughs> families, but you are not babies or uh, adults. I'm just saying that in terms of uh, your when you enter academia uh, as a fresh graduate after your PhD, maybe with no zero experience in teaching, uh probably uh, I perceive you as someone who is fresh, who's ready to take on the world, but probably wondering what to do, or what's the first step, or what's the step that you need to take. The first is you need to develop a strategy and growth mindset. And this is important, because I think uh, uh, almost all of us uh, have done our PhD. Huh? Uh, a PhD, uh, as an example, as, a, uh, as what I've shared with my students, Getting a PhD means you are a thinker. You you can think on your own. Uh, that's the, that's the, to me. Uh, when I, for example, when I I, I become a, a PhD thesis a, a evaluator, I what I want to see is the ability for the student that, uh, to think on his own. Uh, that's why sometimes in Viva we ask you the student challenging question because we want you to think and to think out of the box to to be to be ready to be. To respond to some challenging questions because you so uh, because you can think uh, I, I presume that everyone can think well so you must be able to, to have strategy and some sort of a growth mindset not a fixed mindset that means you are uh, you are what, what does it mean operationally it means that you can always adapt you can always change your approach you can as long and because but you see the goals you are clear on the where you want to, what you want to achieve where you're going and so the path can be many, right? For example, now I'm in Penang. I'm in Penang. And yes, I'm in Penang. I want to go to Kuala Lumpur. There are many ways to go to Kuala Lumpur. Uh, not so many, but there are a number of ways. I can uh, take a flight. I can drive my own car. I can take a rail, a train. I can I can uh, take a motorcycle, use a motorcycle. I can, I don't know, maybe go by sea, you know, go to the port and take go, and go to Plabang Klang and take uh, something. So there are many ways to reach KL. So, and develop, we must develop a strategy and growth mindset. And this is, to me, is very critical, very important for us in academy. Because in our nature of work, we need to be, we, we need to have a, some, a mindset which is a growth mindset, not, not, not a fixed mindset. And then we must take strategic action to achieve our strategic career investment goals. Okay? You need to have a, a clear what actions. You need to do things. Do not, do not just plan things, but you need yeah, the most next, the next one after that is to do things. You need to uh, do real actions on the ground, okay, in and uh, day in day out, because in order to get cl uh, closer and closer to your goals, to our goals, okay. And this is the reality, right? You need to work. You need to. You cannot just dream about something and not not do not uh, uh, do not uh, uh, and do not do anything, and it won't just become a dream, okay. Uh, so this way, that's why they say, that's why uh, they say if you want to achieve your uh, uh, dream, you have to wake up, wake up. <laughs> then the dream will, uh, will become reality, right? And the third one is to demonstrate uh, the work quality. Uh, so this is the issue: Demo demonstrate that you are qualified, that you have qualified, that you are ready to be considered as uh, as as someone. Uh, worthy of getting promoted, uh, worthy of given the chance to climb the academy to the career ladder, a career as an academic. We are, this morning we are, we assume all of us are most all of us are academics, a lecturer, faculty member in a university setting, right? So we must demonstrate the work, the quality of our work, okay, uh, throughout the spectrum, okay. Uh, I, 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 uh, there was a there was a there was a session I had with uh, some of the new lecturers. I think I've, I've mentioned this in my in my in my previous session. And when I asked the new lecturer, what is uh, how do you know that what are one of the main, main criteria that, that that makes a senior lecturer ready to be promoted to associate professor, and what are the among the main criteria that that you can you will know that an associate professor is ready to be promoted to a professor. So I asked. This young uh, lecturer, so he, he's, uh, I think she, uh, she, she's, she's now still a senior lecturer. So uh, she was like, she was looking for, uh, uh, you know, 
you know, lecturer sometimes when they ask, they want you, they want to hear the answer that what they have in their head, right? <laughs> not not your so much your answers, but what your answer might be similar to what what they have in their head. Right? So so I told I told the the the, the league, the young league that you know uh, the main criteria among the main criteria that signify a senior lecturer is ready to be promoted to associate professor is the visibility in the research domain in his expertise at the national level. Uh, uh, that means that person, you as an applicant, let's say I'm, I'm let's say myself, I'm a person and I'm my, my expertise or my domain of interest in robotics, control and robotics. So I should, I must uh, be seen as somebody is visible as an expert, at, the, at least at the national level among my colleagues in the field. So that means uh, 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 that's, that's a, that gives you a feel that this person is ready to be considered seriously to be promoted. And vice uh, versa uh, also uh, for uh, if the, that person may, may, may publish, you know, so many papers, so many, and on his or her own right is ready now. But when uh, 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 you are, uh, uh, compared uh, when you are put at the national seat, nobody know you. Nobody really. You are not significant. You are not really recognized as an expert. So it, it throws in a lot of doubt in terms of your readiness to be promoted. Uh, so that and, uh, the same goes with the associate professor. For associate professor to be promoted to professor, to me, to me, at least to me, and I mean to many of us uh, evaluators, we will we will want to see what's the uh, position of the associate professor. At the international level, in his field, for example, the same person in robotics, for example, how do the international uh, colleagues in robotics see this person? Is he established enough? If nobody knew him, uh, knew him at the international level, then it throws uh, it throws in a little bit doubt whether this person is really have professed his expertise in that particular area. Uh, so, so this is uh, I'm, I'm trying to relate the issue with demonstrating the, the work quality. You must demonstrate the quality of your work, not just uh, uh, to, especially to your colleagues, uh, within the, the, at least among your domain of uh, expertise uh, that you are in. But these are your peers, are your peers. Uh, because, you know, in, in the academic setting, a lot of peer, there are a lot of places where your peers will evaluate you, will evaluate our performance. Sometimes in so many uh, domain of uh, responsibility, okay. So that means uh, develop a strategic and growth mindset, take strategy actions, and demonstrate your uh, work, work quality. And then stage two uh, is when we we uh, stage one is becoming uh, promotable. Sec second is getting promoted. Okay, getting promoted is first you must uh, invest. Uh, we must invest uh, enough time. Uh, in preparing the application, okay. Uh, as I said, we must apply. <laughs> we must apply to be promoted. That's a reality, yeah. Okay. Even now, every few minutes, uh, you need to apply, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So invest enough time in preparing the application, in in, in ensuring that we feel, we have fulfilled all the at least the qualifying requirements. You know. Uh, getting promoted means uh, uh, that there, there will always be the qualifying criteria, uh, qualifying requirements that you must fulfill before you will be even considered to be promoted. So make sure you meet the meet the minimum requirement or qualifying criteria. Because if you do not meet this, don't bother submitting because it won't be even be considered. It won't be processed because you have not met. The minimum requirement. It's like you know when you're going to Olymp if you want to run the hundred meter uh, sprint, eh, you want to enter. You cannot just apply. I want to run at the. Uh, you want to run at the Olympics, right? Hundred meter sprint. You can't because you need to have the minimum. I do not know. You need to run at least. I don't know. Maybe eleven seconds or something. Something. I do not know. Okay. But there is a qualifying. And once you qualify, then you can be probably. Uh, be invited or be be allowed to participate, and then just even you know saringan and said said in order to get just the best person to run the finals of the hundred meter sprint. For example, invest enough time preparing application and know what's expected, okay, and then address the promotion criteria effectively. Uh, for example, okay, let's say uh, uh, 
if uh, the criteria say you want, you need to publish in at least, I do not know, for example, uh, five uh, uh, index journal, okay, index journal paper recognized by Web of Science, for example, and they say it's Q1 and Q2. So make sure when you submit, you, you address the promotion criteria. Probably if they say either Q1 or Q2, you go for Q1, and you know, effectively, there's no doubt about it. You do not throw in some Q3 or some Q4, depend, that's why you need to know, we need to know the expectation or requirement in your university, okay? And then show impact, evidence clearly, uh, bring the evidence. Uh, there are people, uh, my own experience back then when we we, we evaluate uh, paper, paper based on it's all hard copy, sometimes it's not available. The, 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 the evidence is not available. And the, some evidence are not uh, incomplete. The, the, the DOI numbers, etc. Uh, we are not sure about the uh, whether uh, the, the 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 paper is indexed or not. Uh, so you make it harder for the evaluator needs to check for you. Uh, you do not provide the evidence, and uh, I think immediately you 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 reduce your chance of even being considered. Okay, show what you have evidence clearly, and then review the application carefully. Uh, so before you submit, review, make sure that you have submitted. Uh, uh, and fulfill as much as possible the expectation or the criteria uh, laid out uh, before for submission. And this is so. Remember, stage one be, become a promote. Always try to uh, put effort to become a promotable academic. Second, uh, go through the process to get promoted. Be promoted. Okay. So, what are the key strategies? Uh, first, develop a growth mindset, as I mentioned earlier. Understand the development, learning nature of academic promotion, identify the gaps, uh, where you are now, what's expected, create a strategic performance development, development plan. Now, these, there are so many tools. Uh, uh, it's just you need to find the tools or the method that will, that, that will fit your work, work, work habit or work culture. Because some, some tools are very uh, uh, like micromanage many things. So you, you find it very taxing to. Uh, you spend a lot of time just to fill in the box. Huh? So you do not want that kind of, for example, uh, performance development tools, for example. So you go for others. And then grow performance strategically. Try as much as possible to close the performance gap. Uh, okay, we have, for example, eh? so we have people who are excellent in publication, but not so good on, let's say, on consultation work, working with industry, right? Uh, so you have to, uh, so since you know that you are quite stable, you're quite strong in the publication, you need to give more effort on the, put more, slightly more effort on the industry collaboration work because to bring in money from industry because this is your, this is your weak, weak links. You need to strengthen it. So uh, do not, uh, do not play the game of uh, let the evaluator consider uh, since I'm very good in publication, uh, maybe they close one eye to my, my weaknesses, my loopholes. No, no, they will look at everything. So, so you need to. Uh, we need we need to look uh, as much as possible to try to close your performance gaps. And uh, so this is critical. And align your performance, our performance with the university strategic development goals. Uh, seek mentors, performance, uh, career advice. Okay, demonstrate work quality, address promotion barriers. Oh, I forgot. I think I, I talked about. It. Okay. So uh, the the four the four the key strategies uh, because you know when you give online sharing this we have so much uh, in terms of time so I just show the big uh, points uh, so that hoping that you will elaborate further on your own okay develop a growth mindset I've already explained it uh, uh, explained it just now uh, uh, expanded a bit on the on the on the notes uh, understand the development learning nature of your academic promotion in your university. Uh, this is important in your university. Uh, do not uh, take uh, academic promotion process from RMC and try to force your university to follow that process. No, you have to follow the process in your university because uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble if you're trying to enforce other criteria to your university because you are you are not you are the applicant. Man. So and if I get create strategy from okay, so that means. Uh, 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 this relate to the growth mindset that I mentioned much earlier in my uh, talk that we need to grow. Growth mindset, as I say, adaptability, uh, uh, adapt and adopt different styles, learn, uh, relearn, unlearn certain things. You know, uh, sometimes 
there are certain habits that we do that need to be unlearned and you need to relearn or doing the best way to do certain things. You have to do and you have to do. Okay? Um, and then, uh, uh, grow performance strategically. I mentioned this. You know, you have your current performance level. All of us have our current performance level and our desired performance level. So you have this performance gap and the performance indicators that will highlight you the gap that you are, where, your weakness, where, where your weaknesses are. So we, as much as possible, we try to close these gaps. Okay, and this needs, you know, things like this uh, can be uh, faculty driven or school driven or program driven. But it works and sometimes it doesn't work. It must be self driven. You, you, we ourselves would like to close these performance gaps. So this, the effort mainly will come from, from us. You know, even as a Muslim, Allah will not change. Uh, 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 your condition until you change what is in you, uh, in, in your, in you lah. So okay, Allah tak muka nasi atau kau, tak sehingga kau tu muka apa yang ada dalam diri mereka. So we the the change the change uh, must come from within uh, rather than uh, from outside trying to be enforced onto you. So it must be come from within. Then you going to grow uh, and you you improve your performance and try to close the uh, uh, performance gap. And this is a uh, to me, this is a uh, with and without, uh, 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 with and with, oh, either with from uh, getting promotion or without getting any promotion. It brings a lot of satisfaction to us. For example, for example uh, we have never got, uh, be, we have never managed to be successful in publishing a Q1 uh, journal. For example, you know, there will be a lot of the, the level of satisfaction when you finally get your one paper published in Q1 is 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 not is cannot be described, you know, it's very difficult to describe the feeling of being satisfied, the happy, being happy of getting, you know. So, uh, that's why I say, yes, if you, because of this, you got promoted, good. If not, you get, you get, you still will have the satisfaction of uh, being successful, even though in this one uh, uh, tiny uh, uh, section in your academic uh, career, you manage to close the gap. Uh, so, this is uh, something that we need to try as much as possible. And then uh, the third one is demonstrate the work quality. Okay, demonstrate improvement in work quality. Keep a record of work impact evidence ready to demonstrate in the written application. And uh, so this is a, this is a challenge. Uh. Sometimes, you know, when I realize that sometimes we, we have done, actually we have done a lot of things uh, in university. And uh, as I mentioned in uh, some of the talk before, um, uh, Academic, uh, as an academic, we are expected to be excellent in, in many areas. You need to be a, an excellent educator, inspirational educator. You need to be a successful, hardworking researcher, intelligent or industrious researcher. You need to become a very good leader, uh, excellent leader, uh, very good teamwork. You can manage things. You need to be somebody who are very impactful in society. You need to be someone who's very active in professions. There's so many things. And, and then you need, at the same, same time, you need to be someone who is very uh, uh, aggressive in getting, uh, bringing money from industry, income generation, you know. So, so an academic is like a super, superman or superwoman. They are expected to be to excel in wherever they touch becomes gold, you know. This is, this, is, this is far, far cry from reality because uh, you know that we are sometimes we are good there, we are not good there. So it, there's always a balance. Uh. Uh, so you need to strike a balance uh, and capitalize on your strength and improve and try to reduce or improve on the weaknesses that you have. Try to reduce the, the, the level of weakness that you have in some section. Okay. So, but the key is to the, the documentation. Uh, the documentation, like uh, my own experience in USM, now they, they everything, I think many universities now they, they have online a cloud based uh, documentation or uh, recording or storage. Uh, so you every time you got you update, you upload, you update your uh, evidence, etc. So it makes it easier. Lah. Many years ago, maybe uh, 15, 20 years ago, everything you need to print, lah. print, put in a file, 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 file. And once you submit, you bring two, three box of file. Lah. Everything is hard copy now. This they start to move to, many have moved towards uh, soft copy, cloud-based storage, and this is important, okay? And uh, finally, I think, uh, is to address promotion barriers. There are issues, uh, uh, cultural barriers, 
organizational barriers, uh, portfolio barriers. There are meaning uh, in getting promotion. I think uh, I think the biggest barrier that we need to overcome is self belief. Uh, self belief. The belief that uh, uh, the belief that we are we are worthy of getting promoted, being given a promotion. I think we have to we have to build this self uh, confidence and belief. Of course, we be logical about, be realistic about it. If you don't have, if you have no published paper, you have not published any paper suddenly, or oh, I believe I'm a good researcher, then uh, your belief is not good enough. Huh? I mean, maybe the belief, self-belief must be supported by uh, by documents, by proof, uh, and do not allow uh, your, soft, uh, they call it uh, self-audit, self-audit. Now, you do not, you do not, you do not even submit, though you have you have fulfilled the criteria because you think, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, I'm too young, etc. I'm not ready, etc. Uh, but for for the record, there is no age uh, minimum age requirement eh, for promotion or submitting submission your application to get promoted. There's no minimum. I mean, uh, to be professor, professor, you must be at least forty five years old. There's no such, there's no such thing. Eh? Uh, uh, so that's why I think. Uh, I think in USM, I think the youngest professor, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 32, 34 years old, becoming a full professor. Okay. Uh, myself, I'm a bit older. I was a professor. I became professor at age of 40. But I know many of my colleagues at 38, 41, you know, young, uh, not that young back then. And so the, the point is, there is, there is, uh, there is no, no, uh, that is the to me the the the, the uh, single main uh, barrier that you need we need to overcome uh, the self self belief that you are ready yeah of course uh, 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 look after you look at all the proof and document that you have okay then culture barriers for example or this normally uh, normally uh, you, uh, nobody gets promoted uh, because you know there's a feeling and. and that, I give you an example. Right? Uh, there, there, there is this sense of uh, uh, like there's a feeling that if my faculty have already let's say six professors and the other faculty only have one professor, the chance of me getting promoted in my faculty would be less uh, because they already have many professors. So uh, my friend who are in the other faculty who only have only one professor, his chance of getting promoted is higher than me. Could this be or may not be true? Uh, 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 on paper, uh, uh, I don't, I've never seen this uh, as being used as a measure. Uh, but sometimes people you know, talk about it. People say, ah, it's okay, yeah, your school, apalah, tak ramai professor, senang naik pangkat. School saya ramai professor, pak ya, naik pangkat. And so that kind of, that kind of thinking. So this, this uh, cultural barriers of, uh, based on perception, uh, Cetra should be should be should be, be overcome, and you need to go and uh, submit and do your do your submission. Okay, and uh, uh, getting promoted is like uh, it's like uh, your PhD. Also, you may have done a lot of good work, uh, but you never submit your thesis. <laughs> so you never you will never get your PhD right because you have never submitted your thesis. So submit submit application. What's the worst? You don't get it. You can that you do not get promoted. That's the worst case scenario. You don't get, you don't get it doesn't go worse, worse than that. And eh? so you can always try try another time. Uh, maybe uh, hopefully this time you're going to get it. Okay. Let me just try okay. So just as a recap, so develop a growth mindset, uh, grow performance strategically, demonstrate work quality address promotion barriers okay and what in 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 one of these it also talk about mentoring about mentors huh? for example the, the, the pro performance surgically seek mentors performance and career advice talk to people ask your senior ask the ask your ask your colleagues you know ask your ask your deans eh, deputy deans uh, those who are more seniors about the reality of uh, going for promotion in your university okay because and uh, try to emulate your mentors, find a mentors. The mentors can be in your same university, can be from other university, find a mentors. You know, the mentors that basically like you, like have similar style like you, or this, this, the mentors that is of a style that you can follow. Okay, okay, because we need mentors, huh? because if not, uh, because mentors will help us to uh, find the shortcuts. Huh? 
because uh, and avoid us making mistakes and uh, avoiding pit, the pitfalls. Huh? If not, you start to make a lot of mistakes and uh, you you uh, things that you should be counted you do not count. Thing that is not comfortable you count. You know, so you, you waste a lot of time there. So mentors to me is is important. Uh, at least uh, there's not there's no tak ada rugi lah kalau kita ada mentor ni kita tanya orang kita minta pandangan can people uh, actually the senior they like to share they want to share their story but nobody ask right <laughs> so uh, who are going to who, who, to whom they want to share their stories eh? so success so the success we need we need uh, needs hard work it's not easy and but uh, and the career ladder uh, for academics uh, nowadays is is getting clearer and quite 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 vivid it's clear you know it's just whether and the criteria now are very clear even if you if, if your university are not that clear you can always go to the uh the the portal of ministry of education there there are there are very they have uh, documents where you can download and uh, they have the generic criteria for associate professor for professor a professor b professor c etc so that there are very clear criteria that you can use and normally that criteria normally will fulfill as if i'm not mistaken if not all almost all public university uh, specifically in, in malaysia so you can always use that if your university do not have uh, a, a clear like let's say outline of your uh, of, of how to get promoted okay so i i, I when I was preparing the slide, I, I got some, uh, I found some some uh, some issues being discussed about academic promotion in Malaysia public university. I think this is quite uh, a few years back kind of slides. It talks about in Malaysia, uh, it, uh, oddly enough, it, it varies from one public institution to another. Uh, may not vary tremendously, but they vary, there are variances here and there. So you, you cannot really assume that uh one will fit to the other okay uh uh nowadays is getting uh, more uniform because why because you start to get uh your external assessor normally will come from outside or from your externally from not from your institution from outside example personally i've evaluated first application from i think UTM uh uitm uh, so number of public uh, uh associate professor for many utem uh, uia etc so 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 normally i will ask them what's your criteria what's your criteria and normally they will also like ask in the evaluation for what if this stuff is in your university would he or she be promoted uh, so i will give my comments uh, huh? but there are variations okay and then there are perspective academic promotion. Uh, you can see that uh, universities in Malaysia are not that old. Actually, the oldest would be in Simlaya, in Simlaya, but still it's not that old. Uh, like USM uh, started in 1969, so it's not, still it's not that old. We are not. You are not comparing to uh, Harvard or all those old universities, huh? But uh, in terms of academic promotion, only only recently, the last I would say ten. Uh, the first uh, last 10 15 years it becomes more and more uh, established more rigorous more systematic the process even the process are uh, now very uh, uh, automated for example is more uh, more reliable and complex uh, with your respect uh, to the process that we had before and because you must understand uh, promotion at uh, uh, the university is not decoupled from the reality of society outside there. No, we are a part of society. So when society change, university also change. Eh? So you, we must be clear on that. Eh? And then there are issues. Uh, uh, the promotion system in the promotion system in Malaysian public universities. For example, for example, uh, we have around twenty plus uh, public university which use the same salary system, grading and salary system, but the Malaysian policy have different academic promotion promotion policies and practices. So, for example, USM and another university. Uh, okay, USM, for example, is RU. It's a, it's a research university. There are, uh, uh, in Malaysia, there are five research universities and there are 15 plus who are not, which are not considered research university. But all of us have the same. Uh, it, it uses the same uh, common grade and salary system. Okay, so... And the, pro the criteria may differ 
significantly from one industry to the other. Uh, so this is the odd, the glaring oddity of the system. Uh. Uh, so for example, uh, individuals from established university compared to individuals from a slightly new university, let's say the university is like 10 years old, university kind of thing. Uh, so uh, both universities will use the same, same uh, salary, grading, promotion, very uh, salary, uh, salary system, great uh, salary system. Okay. So uh, uh, in a way, it's a, it's a blessing, yeah, because now university, because university of Malaysia, uh, the public university especially, and I'm pretty sure the, the private university have their own, it's more, more so in the private industry, they have their own internal uh, promotion exercise because financially they are really dependent, right? Compared to public universities, which uh, honestly is depending uh, largely on the budget from the uh, central uh, agency uh, from the government. So, so it's logical why they use the same uh, grade and salary system. But in terms of evaluation, each university will, will use their own system. That's why you, we need to know what's, what's how the process being done in our university. Uh, so, uh, so that we are not, uh, we are not, we do, we do not get frustrated or something. Uh, okay, do not do not say, oh, why the same performance? My friend in this university got promoted. I, um, why me in my USM in my university I don't get promoted? I'm better than him. What? Uh, so you cannot you cannot use that argument. Each university have their own unique, uh, whatever unique uh, evaluation process. Uh, uh. Uh, so there are these are some issues, etc. Uh, that will uh, that will arise uh, as you go and try to get promoted and climb the academy ladder. Okay, process. Uh, so there are some issues. For example, different process system with one salary structure. Is it research? Is it teaching? Globalization? A ranking? And these are issues. Uh. there are many issues. And and I want to say to you, yes, you can talk about this bigger agenda, bigger this this uh, conceptual and philosophical discussion why ranking is important, why ranking is not important. Yes, you can do all the discussion, but the bread and butter is that if you want to get promoted, we need to fulfill the performance uh, uh, indicators to uh, make sure that we qualify. So you qualify being, being considered if you, uh, if they, uh, this pool of qualified uh, person to be considered, uh, not everyone will be selected. Some only a certain percentage will be called for interviews uh, to be promoted. Why? Because there are issues in terms of position. Uh, you know, you know. To be uh, logical about it, if you have let's say fifty uh, faculty members, it's illogical to have fifty professors. Uh, just to be logical about it, you won't be you won't be realistic. So. There will be a limited place for number of quotas uh, because this will, the number of professors or associate professors will also imply in terms of finance, the salary, emolument. Uh, in general, based on my experience before uh, holding uh, as a DBC and also as a VC, temporary acting VC for UMAP, uh, UAs, you know, uh, we spend around uh, at least 60% of our annual budget on salary, emoluments, emoluments or salary. Yeah. So there's a lot of money being used to, to, to pay for professors, associate professors, et cetera, et cetera. So, so it's logically not everyone can become associate professor. Not everyone will become professors. Uh, so there, there is always this level, certain level of uh, competition that we must uh, uh, do in order that we must to, 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 to go ahead, uh, to, to be ahead. Huh? Well, I think life is like that because uh, if, the, if, the, if, if if a university say, no worry, after 15 years, everyone will become professor. I can guarantee you nobody will do anything. Huh? They just wait 15 years, they become professor. Huh? So, so logically, you have to work huh? because it's a fact of life that we need to prove our worth in order to get uh, something worthwhile. Huh? Okay? So these are some of the issues, but do not get yourself involved so much until on the philosophical or agendas and discussion because it might digress you from the real world. At the end of the day, you have to become, you have to do your research work, you have to write papers, you have to teach well, we have to engage with industry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as much as possible. Lah. And, and try to uh, use the performance uh, indicators in your university in order to qualify you to be considered to be promotion. Okay. Finally, 
just to rec recap uh, the four stages to successful academic and career planning, uh, they call it ACP. First, who am I? I get to know your interests, skills, and strength. Okay, sometimes uh, this is important. Sometimes we need, we need some time to reflect on our capacity, capabilities, and who we are because this is will help us to move forward. If you do not know where you are, uh, what's my strength, what then weaknesses, how do you move forward? Okay, then explore where do I want to go? Uh, explore career pathways and education opportunities. They say probably like like if if you are teaching an engineering faculty or teaching in the engineering program, the public you see now this you have to. Uh, seriously think about getting your professional engineer status, uh, IR, your, or maybe now uh, your professional technologist, the TS, or maybe, I don't know, getting your data engineer just to, or maybe you want to explore doing some professional courses on, let's say, I don't know, on deep learning or on data analytics, just to add to your strengths so that uh, this will help you to progress on your career ladder. And third is to plan. How do I get there? See your role. What's the best route to get? Uh, set goals, choose courses, join, uh, join no, this is just an example. This is just general guide. Huh? Uh, join the research group. Uh, get yourself aligned with some uh, uh, mentors, uh, uh, professors, or social professors. The seniors are. Sometimes mentors and not necessarily a professor. Somebody senior that you can that you seek advice, you know. Uh, because there are there are seniors who are not they are not professors, but they have a very good work uh, collaboration with industry. They bring a lot of income to the university to work with industry. You want, you might want to learn from him or her. Right? Not necessarily you only listen from professors or others you don't want to listen. No, no, you learn from everyone. We can Kitani, we can always learn from anybody. Uh, okay, uh, as long as we and then we filter lah. Mana yang baik. And finally, go. <laughs> go means uh, recap. Calculate, uh, macam kita, macam kita uh, guna, apa ni, way sebagainya kan. Bila salah tu dia recalculate. <laughs> recalculate our path. Kadang-kadang recalculate, calculate, jauh lagi pusing. Tak apalah, asal sampai kan. So, so the, this is the, the, so this is my, I think I would, I would stop at this point. So this is my, I know it's, it's very shallow, it's not that deep, but the point is for you to, to, if you can appreciate one or two points that I've shared this morning, I'm, I'm happy with it. And I hope you will be very successful in your career, in your career as an academics, and you'll be progress uh, as high as possible. Eh? So finally, uh, you know, when everything seems to be going against you, remember an airplane uh, takes off against the wind, not with the wind. Uh, so so uh, thank you very much uh, for listening, and I'm open uh, if you have any opinions or questions. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Professor, for your for your very fruitful and kind sharing. So I would like to open to the audience if you have any question for Prof. Rizal. Okay, we have our very first question. Uh, it's in the chat box, Prof. Yeah. What is the strategy to have many consultation works? Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the uh, who, who, who the question come from from, from? from Dr. Nor Sinira Zainul Azlan. Okay, from which university? I'm if I, not if I may sure. Know. If if Dr. Nor Sinira, if you can tell Prof from which university you are from, UIA. Oh, UIA. Oh, okay, okay. And the reason I ask, uh, there's a reason I ask <laughs> because okay, so uh. Let, uh, I've done uh, personally. I've done a number of uh, consultation work, mainly contract research with a number of company uh, uh, in uh, outside. Uh, and my, I think uh, the way, uh, from my experience, the limited experience uh, is for us to understand their problems. Okay, because uh, I'm, my field is robotics. You know, robotics. I can uh, surely I can tell I can explain a lot of formulas and theories and concepts in robotics flying robot, swimming robot, etc. But uh, they are, maybe they are interested to listen to my talk maybe for the first half an hour, then they will be bored uh, because uh, my uh, sharing will not solve their problems. So, <laughs> so the first thing is to seek to understand their problems uh, because sometimes their problems actually only needs a very straightforward, simple solution for us and they will be, immediately we can get uh, a real uh, 
uh, working kind of uh, close uh, uh, cooperation with the industry. The, the first step, the first step is to understand their problems, and uh, you know this is what uh, what we call say the uh, 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 either we are uh, pushing our technology or pulling. Uh, is it pulling, pulling in or pushing? So we are pulling in the uh, uh, the problems that we can solve rather than trying to push our technology. Sometimes uh, I, I realize even myself. Sometimes we have we have done a lot of good work. We want to push the technology to industry. We start we start to explain to industry this and this and this and these are the the good things or the excellent thing from uh, from. Uh, uh, my research, and I want you. I think this technology is good for you. You know, you realize that you will feel a lot of interested because they say they say I, I I have no use for your for your for your technology. So the, I think the, 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 the I think it, just to summarize my answer, I think uh, I, and the reason I ask the question because if I'm in Penang, I'm right, we sit next to the biggest electronic industry setup uh, uh, in Malaysia, which is the free trade zone. So. Uh, if I want to engage with them, it's just a, a phone call away. I just can go to, and normally they are very accepted. They are very open to come and discuss. So you have to engage with them, meet them. And I know of uh, my colleagues from UTM, MMU, they fly into Penang to meet Intel, etc. Uh, sometimes kita pun apa ni, datang jauh-jauh kan. Tapi it's not, it's not nobody's fault. Yeah, everybody who's just more aggressive lah. But they come, etc. And so the, 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 the key to me, to increase consultation with the industry is to engage, to really understand their, their needs. Because for them, uh, they need, uh, if somebody can solve their problem and increase the revenue, uh, they will be very happy to work with us. Huh? Okay? So, all right. So, next question from Dr. Nazira Basri, you are a Kuantan. Salam Prof, can you share how you manage your time with doing supervision, teaching, consultation work and research? For myself as a clinician, clinical work is very taxing. Okay, I understand, understand. I think, I think it's, it's very difficult to give a one, a one size fits all kind of solutions. Huh? So that's why I think, in my opinion, in my, in my it's like this. Uh, okay, to get promoted, uh, you have the, uh, the qualifying criteria in many domains, right? Research, teaching, uh, 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 publication, uh, the sub publication, supervision, uh, uh, consultation, etc., uh, etc. Et so the the key is to make sure, no matter how busy we are, make sure we can fulfill the qualifying requirement. So this is important. Make, make sure that we can feel we can fulfill the qualifying requirement. So above than that is your strength. For example, if you are if you are if you are a clinical person uh, that do a lot, your your time is very limited. So you must be sure that you you strategize or plan your work so that you can ensure that your papers qualify the minimum requirement, your solution qualify the minimum requirement, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you will supersede or, or you will uh, exceed expectation in other domains that your your strength are in. So that will balance out. But do not allow any of the any of the section to be uh, do not even meet the minimum uh, uh, requirement so how do i manage my time i i i, I try as much as possible to ensure that it it, it is not uh, you know when you, no i'm not a good timekeeper or planner i'm just sharing it. the thing is this we need to ensure that we allocate time you know, we allocate time. If we, if we are hoping, we will do this research if when we have time. I can, I can say that you will, we will never find the time. Huh? Because we are always busy. Eh? Uh, no, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Shafi or Imam Ghazali, he, uh, he was saying that we will always, kita ni akan keluar daripada satu kesibukan dan masuk pada satu kesibukan yang lain. Uh, dia tak ada waktu yang kita tak sibuk. Lah. Tapi sibuk buat apa? Ada orang dia sibuk tidur. Sibuk juga tidur. Sibuk tidur. Sibuk juga. So, so we will always move from one, one uh, a thing to another thing. There will be no time that we are not doing anything. In fact, the not doing anything is doing something. Huh? Not doing anything. Huh? Okay, so the, the key is to allocate time. Once we allocate time, consciously, I think we will be able to manage and fulfill all the sub-sub targets that we are setting for ourselves. 
But we need to allocate consciously and deliberately. Uh, bukannya haraplah macam macam ni lah, macam simpan duit kan. Orang kata dapat gaji, kalau ada lebih saya simpan duit. Memang tak ada lebih lah. Tapi kalau dapat gaji, kita simpan siap-siap 10%, uh, kita spend only the 90%. For sure, we have the 10% simpanan lah. Sama juga. If you have the time, we allocate already. Uh, okay lah, if you hope, I hope after by the end of the day, I, I will find the time to do this work. Most likely, you won't find the time because we are, we are too busy. Yeah? So, this conscious, deliberate action or allocating time is important. I know and if all of us have different challenges. Uh, maybe maybe I, I presume Dr. Uh, Nazila is a medical doctor, so busy, or somebody who is uh, the clinical session, etc. may not have the time to do uh, spend time in the research lab. But as I said, please ensure that you uh, plan so that you can fulfill the qualifying requirement. I'm um, Chitula. Okay, thank you, Prof. Next question from Dr. TSS from UTHM. Uh, Good morning, Prof. How you plan? How do you plan your strategy? For example, supervision, publication, consultation, grants. So it's about okay. your strategy, Prof. Okay, okay. Uh, I think I think my plan is I think not much differ from different than all, all of us. Huh? I mean, you have to set your goals. For example, uh, some people, I say, I, I think, example, publications, right? Publications, uh, some people, you know, as an academic in a public university, you need, you need to at least to fulfill the two papers uh, uh, publication, right? General publication per year. Kalau uh, SM ni, dia letak four untuk Q, uh, Q1, Q2, if I'm not mistaken, four papers kalau you professor. It's fulfill lah. So, kalau bila dah ada target tu, when you have already have the target, now you plan lah. Uh, for publication, uh, when when do I get my, uh, how many I need to do this year? Uh, so for the first paper, you know, uh, which journal? Uh, how how I enable, how, how can I enable this first publication? Okay, I have this student, master student, his work, he already has some conference paper, I can improve on the conference paper, maybe combine it and add some more result, I publish in the new paper. So, and you must always, we must always consider the time taken, needs for us to get it published. Sometimes you plan, plan, plan for papers, everything is published next year. So this year is zero. So you are in trouble. Lah. So make sure you plan it. So it's all, it's, all, it's all about planning, getting a clear picture of the target, having a target, and go for it. And try to uh, try to ensure that you do. You, uh, I, before I forget, you know, all of us have goals. All of us set goals. You know, uh, Simon Sinek. Eh? Simon Sinek is one uh, uh, management guru, they call it. Eh? Simon Sinek. Eh? They kata, uh, you can Google the name, Simon Sinek. Eh? They get a, a lot of us have uh, goals, but uh, we don't have the process to achieve our goals. So we focus on our goals, but we focus less on the process. As they say, okay, you focus on your goals, have your process, focus of implementing the process, and you, you'll reach your goals. Huh? If you have a lot of goals, clear goals, clear goals, uh, the smart system, specific, measurable, apa ni, macam macam kan? achievable lah, tapi tak ada proses. You don't have the process. You don't have student, you don't have the, you don't have the lab, you don't have the equipment. Suddenly you think, you say, oh, I, will, I want to become, I want to produce 10 papers this year. So, goals must be matched with the process and the process will be, must be made realistic so that it is achievable. I'll give you an example. If you ask me, for example, uh, do you think that you're going to have a PhD student this year and next year and the year after? I say no. Why? I have no PhD student now. So, PhD student needs at least three years, at least, uh, to go to produce a PhD student. So, logically, I can only, I can safely say, the my next PhD student, the earliest will be twenty twenty five. That will be the earliest my PhD when I'm the next provision. Why? Because I don't have any now. So, so you know the 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 it must be realistic, yeah. So that so that's why you put your goal. Do not be, do not. Always remember to be realistic. Do not just put, do not just, do not just put everything inside the target up as a goal without realizing that it's not possible. Uh, it takes time, no? Things take time. You want you want to be it also takes time. If you don't want to take time, you go and buy at the shop. Huh? Uh, but if <laughs> so, that means uh, uh, even if you want to buy at the shop, you have to have the money first. So that's a, always an issue. Eh? Nothing you get nothing for. There's no free lunch. Huh? There's nothing you can get for free. There's always something you have to give. Uh, so, uh, to answer the question, uh, 
uh, you have to plan again to plan and be realistic about it and work with others because we are not we, are, we never work independently right there's always our colleagues our our dean our deputy dean our head of group you know that you work with our students yeah? uh, that and our colleagues from other universities who work with people so that uh, you you will achieve, you finally will achieve your goals huh? Hey, Prof, thank you. I have a question from, from myself. Uh, we can see that nowadays, uh, there are so many young PhD graduates yeah. uh, at the age of 25, even 24, pun, uh, already graduated and they join academia as, as well as a senior lecturer straight away. So normally what they have in mind is because they've obtained their PhD uh, quite early in their age. Yeah. Yeah. So they are targeting that Let's say I must be an associate professor in five years' time or four years' time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they are trying to get uh, everything to be early because they started early and they get PhD early. So I want to be one of the earliest professors in, in my university, let's say. Okay. Mm. And suddenly, uh, when they look at the promotion criteria, uh, they are required to fulfill all the, let's say, the seven P's that we usually yeah, have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. And at the same time, since they are, uh, since we are new lecturers, so you are, we are given the uh, lectures or the, the subjects that uh, no one else wanted. Okay, yeah, subject subject buangan lah, kan? Aja, <laughs> oh, yeah, and not the <laughs> and not the courses that uh, we are expert in. Okay, yeah, yeah. yang expert yang kita expert tu selalunya be given to the senior professors kita bagi laluan kat dia orang. Jadi yang kau ni muda, kau ambil lah subjek, subjek yang baru kan? Nanti yeah, okay. your time will come, okay? And you did, when they are struggling to teach and prepare the lecture notes for the for the new courses that they are going to be teaching, they have been done with all the accreditation work. Then at the same time, OBE semua tu, hmm. and then they jadi stressful lah, okay? Yeah. And then at the same time, they masih target yang five years time dia nak jadi associate professor. So yeah, that yeah, will yeah. put a lot of burden to 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 them to us, okay? So, what's your opinion on uh, setting the time frame to get promoted? Is it we just go with the flow and kita tunggu nanti kalau ada rezeki ada lah, ataupun we we set our target and we we work hard to achieve it? Yeah, yeah. I think this is this is uh, macam tetapi lah, natural lah. Maksudnya kalau orang yang uh, especially uh, nowadays uh, people getting PhD, uh, getting younger, younger lah. Mungkin lepas ni umur I don't know, 22 kot, <laughs> 23 kot, dia, dia buat degree yang selesai umur 19, I do not know lah, tapi maksudnya, tapi once you enter academia as a teaching staff, saya rasa begini lah, I mean, for sure you need to have your target, good to have five years target, let's say you enter with PhD, now you are going to get your senior lecturer, right? Uh, so, let's say, give yourself, let's say, five years, seven years to become associate professor and put your studies and go to work. But, to me, uh, I will always question the, the motivation of why do you want apa kenapa nak sangat ni pangkat ni kenapa nak add associate professor kenapa nak add professor what is the motivation maksud saya kata kalau saya punya pandangan kalau the motivation is to get the bigger salary because you see with bigger salary you're going to be happier because you got more money in the bank you going to get you can you're going to see more money at the end of the month I think uh, probably you are as I said uh, in many occasion uh, this kind of people they are they are I think they're having the wrong uh, target for the wrong profession. Ah. Because, you know, if you want money, you go to the industry. You can, you know, you, you, can, you can get so much money in the academia. Okay, you want to get, you know, I have my friends who work in, uh, uh, before pandemic, lah, they work in the oil and gas industry. They only have a first degree, but their salary is like 50, 60,000 per month, per month. So, and I, I we, some, almost all of us struggle to do our PhD. You know, uh, I don't think I will ever see myself getting a salary of 50,000 lah while I'm in university. Salary, eh? Sebab tak boleh pun, tak kena apa pun. Uh, the salary doesn't go that high. So that means if money is a motivation, we are aiming at the wrong place. Okay, if money is not a motivation, I'm going for the stature. Stature, stature of uh, having the title. No, the, the 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 feeling of greatness or that you are great, you are such a uh, excellent person will go away very fast. Huh? I mean, after some time, it's your worth. Whether uh, 
uh, we 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 are given the title because uh, we really deserve the title, not because uh, of other things. Huh? So I think just uh, you have to have your goals, have your strategies, and manage your times because. I think I'm sure I, I can see uh, my senior from Nordenia also uh, some of this. Our challenges that we face during our time, 15, 10 years ago, maybe 15, uh, 10 years ago, and your time now, when you go, it's different. It will be different for sure. Expectations higher, the bar is higher, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to have your, be adaptable. The growth mindset, I, I keep emphasizing the growth mindset. And, and do not be macam jangan tak sabar sangatlah lah betul you frustrated you kata oh saya dah miss my target I, I'm very frustrated asyik tak nak I do not, do not want to do I want just want to lay back and tak buat apa-apa rugi lah I think do your work to the best of your ability and kan dia, dia betul sebenarnya rezeki tu daripada Allah SWT kan kita usah lah kita mohon lah tapi kalau tak dapat it's okay I'll try again okay belum masa saya tapi keep giving out the quality output quality output and one of these days if people in within your university do not and uh, recognize your contribution, for sure, others will recognize your contribution. At the end of the day, we are working, we are earning our salary. Uh, we are, want to ensure that that salary to the last cent is worthwhile. Uh, so, begitulah maksud saya. Jangan uh, risaulah, lambat. You know, lambat, cepat. Ada orang, sebab tu saya, saya sebenarnya taklah excited sangat kalau macam, oh, dia the youngest professor. Nobody ask uh, the oldest professor, kan? Ada 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 tak nonton ya? Is the oldest person to get a professor tak ni lah kan? Sebab dia uh, dia punya perception kalau tak dapat professor lagi lambat dah professor ni like uh, tak perform. Tapi tak semestinya. Because as I said earlier, depending on the criteria, some people dia tak nak professor pun sebab dia dah mix million. Dia tak nak professor. In fact kalau dapat professor susah dia. Dia kena serve university, kena mengajar, kena dia kata buat apa sesusah kan? Dia dah nak kaya lah. So it depends on it depends. Itulah jawapan saya. Okay, thank you Prof. Do you have any other questions from the audience? Oh, ada soalan ni. Dia kata Prof nak VK berapa? Itu rahsia mana kita? Tapi saya, saya beritahu lah. Saya, saya VK tujuh ya. Kenapa? Ini saya tak ada masalah nak cerita sebab benda ni pun uh, what's the shame in, in sharing this country? Betul lah tak ada masalah cerita. Cuma nak cakap semua begini. Uh, to become senior senior lecturer, you have to apply. To become associate professor, you need to apply. To become a professor, VK7, you need to apply. But after that, there's no apply. You will be invited. And they will evaluate you. For, for sure, I'm probably I'm not qualified. Lah. I have not qualified yet. So I, I will, if they invite, I will submit. Lah. Uh, so it's uh, it's no issue to me. Dah goes on. So uh, uh, from, the, from the climbing the ladder perspective, you can only apply up to VK7. After that, there's only invitation. VK6 ke, VK5 ke. Lepas tu ada lagi, terus tiga, eh, terus dua, terus satu, macam itulah. But, I think it's okay. I think as an academic, to me, I'm satisfied, satisfied enough. Lah. Uh, if you become VK6, VK7, VK5, it's talks about salary. So, InsyaAllah, there are many other avenues if you talk about getting more money. Lah. Tapi, you don't, how, much, how much is enough? Lah? <laughs> so, you have to ask yourself. Itulah jawapan saya. Okay, another question for myself, Prof. Uh, usually when we when we are climbing the ladder in academia, we are always being advised that we need to find our own mentors. Okay? Yeah, betul. And I, I know that some universities, they have a mentoring system. Yang, yeah. yang either system, yang system yang, yang tersusun lah. But I think yeah. in most of the universities, especially the, the younger universities, uh, we don't have such a system. Okay? And it is up to the initiative of each lecturer to find and seek their own mentors. Okay, and we we have it. We had experience that when we when we tried to ask mentorship from the professors, they kata boleh boleh boleh. Tapi bila nak uh, minta pandangan ke nasihat ke, dia sibuk tak sempat <laughs> last kali mentor <laughs> pada nama saja lah. Okay, so from your point of view, uh, what hmm. are the criteria of a good mentor that we should look for? And and uh, and how to approach uh, the the correct person uh, to be our mentor? I think this mentorship issue has been going on. I think at least to me for the last 22, 23 years, I've been working with USM. At least with me. Uh, there is no such system. Uh, I can I want to 
uh, kita cakap tu terdalam memang tak adalah sistem mentor-mentor ni when I was in Winimap pun tak ada mentor-mentor sistem institutionalized maksudnya yang diinstitusikan maksudnya Dr. Rashidan your mentor is Professor ABC uh, Dr. I don't know Dr. I don't know Dr. Hidayah your mentor is Professor Fatima for example there's no such thing it doesn't work like that so what I want to clarify this morning so when we talk about mentor first you need to find a mentor within your field who are in your field that's the best lah. who are in your field so that he can he or she can get you specifically within, within your field uh, so i i remember my my mentor was professor samsudin maamin from utm he is not even for usm because there's nobody in usm that within my field so samsudin maamin was professor arwa uh bosa the Uh, uh, from Masuki Khalid, from uh, these are people who you always refer to. You ask them, you consult them, you ask their opinion, and uh, that's the best, ah, the the person that you within your field. But there are uh, since there's nobody within my field, you find a mentor, somebody senior, they're more experienced, that can give you a general guide as an academics. Uh, so uh, of course, I have my 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 own mentor, personal mentors, but. Where you can, uh, where you can uh, consult them, as and do not limit, uh, restrict to your own university, lah. So the, I think the key is the chemistry. There must be some chemistry that I mean you can relate to the person. You know that this person is uh, empty now, have a, a sufficient empathy to listen to you, to give time to you, and to 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 get you, to correct you if you're wrong. Ah, uh, this is somebody yang uh, like your brother, if not your brother, maybe. Uh, if you you feel too old, maybe your your father lah, your your, like your father right? Somebody that you can talk to. So they, I think the, the the personal relationship is important. The person I mean that that you can relate to, he or she is willing to uh, get you. Uh, so this is some things that you need to find out. Uh, each one of us to find find on your own. Okay, even though if that cannot if that cannot happen, is 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 very difficult for you to do that. You need to find somebody that you can emulate, that you can follow, that you can copy the strategy of. For example, eh, macam kita dengan Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, waktu-waktu ni kan, kita memang tak pernah jumpa Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tapi we know the hadith, we know the sunnah, we know the the sahaba, uh, the stories of the sahaba. So we 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 try to emulate their behavior. Uh, sometimes to emulating behavior juga, kita boleh achieve the same output. Uh, sebab itulah macam, Orang kata kan, macam kalau macam kita duduk kan, kalau kita duduk slouching kan, slouching maksudnya bongkok, macam tu lah. Uh, kita akan rasa malas, kan? tapi kalau kita duduk tegak kan, duduk tegak, uh, duduk tegak, kita akan rasa energetic. You know, even your, the way you sit also will give a different feeling to your AB lah. Uh, uh, desire, uh, dia punya semangat, passion dan kerja tu, sama juga. So you go and try to emulate your mentors. So mentors ni kalau, kalau tak boleh secara fak rasmi pun secara tak rasmi kalau pun dia tak tahu you 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 mentor dia tapi you always follow this person uh, uh, try to use uh, use his or her advice in order to improve your career punya development lah saya rasa begitulah jangan uh, because nobody uh, all of us need some guides all of us including especially my me lah all of us need guides in order to improve ourselves nobody is is good enough or intelligent enough that they do not know they do not need to learn from others So if you have the growth mindset, I think you'll be okay. If you have this fixed close mindset, you say, ah, uh, nobody can teach me anything. I think you're in trouble. Lah. You lah, macam itulah, Dr. Rashid. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Ada lagi tak soalan daripada audience? Kita ada dua minit lagi. Tak ada? Okay, I think itu sahaja kot. Uh, okay. Daripada, daripada kita, eh. Alright, thank you very much, Prof. Thank Rizal, you. Thank uh, you very much, for everyone. Your, for your beneficial sharing. And don't forget uh, next month, okay, next month, inshallah, our next uh, topic uh, will be, will be apa eh? Sekejap nak cek. <laughs> Hilang pula. Uh, wait a minute. Sorry for the delay. Uh, kita just nak share balik the, the poster. Okay, so bila kita nak cari waktu saat-saat genting macam ni memang tak jumpa. Okay, tak apalah. I think we will share the the next program uh, on on Perintis uh, Facebook page. Okay, and uh, we'll, we'll give you the updates on the exact date, uh, exact uh, time 
and also we'll release a new poster for, for next month's event. Okay, and on behalf of printers, I would like to thank Professor RTS Dr. Rizal for for having uh, for for the sharing with us today, which is be, which will be very beneficial for us. Uh, I would like to highlight the, the use of the term uh, early career and not young uh, young young uh, academics or or young lecturers because some of us maybe the masuk academia ni umur dah lanjut so in terms of umur maybe tak young tapi maybe in terms of uh, career progression uh, adalah sedikit young okay jadi sebab itu kita rasakan penggunaan term early career itu adalah lebih tepat lah instead of uh, young lecturers okay however kita harapkan uh, sesi yang kita adakan pada pagi ini dapat memberi manfaat kepada semua uh, sama the early, middle ataupun the advanced because I think there are so many tips that's been shared by Prof. Rizal yang boleh kita kita gunakan. Okay, terima kasih semua. Uh, have a good day and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.